So just about one year ago, we signed our first lease at our original store location before moving into this larger location. We wanna go ahead and talk about some of the renovations that went into this new space and how we made it our own. There were a few reasons why we moved into a larger location. The first being that we just plain and simple ran out of space. We started to grow really rapidly and we were bringing on more and more local artisans. And the more people we brought on, we realized that we actually could really utilize a larger location. It was a big transition moving from the basement store towards the end of town into this larger location, more towards the middle of town. Not only were we out of the basement and we were given some natural light from some real windows, but we were also challenged with another remodel. There were a ton of benefits to having our original store location. Not only was our price a little bit lower, but it was a great place to start and start making some connections. And almost every month we were there, we ended up expanding. If you saw our other video talking about our original store space, you saw that we continuously knocked out walls and created a larger space. And we knew that we were one day gonna outgrow that space. So we kind of kept our eyes open just in case we, we found something that was a little bit more suited for us. So after all of these expansions and, and constantly spreading out in that basement store, we kind of hit a wall one day and we on, we honestly just went on a walk. Yeah, we decided to go on a walk and we walked for about an hour around town, went to dinner, spent a lot of time looking online, trying to find something in our area that was in budget. And it was really difficult. We couldn't really find anything. Um, the real estate in town is very, very thin. Anything that does become available already has another vendor kind of signed up and ready to move in. A lot of places don't actually get listings. There's mm -hmm. almost like a like a secret society of like wait lists <laughs> yeah. for, for these buildings. It, yeah. It's hard to find spaces here. Yeah, but on our walk, on our way back to our original store, we kind of stopped um, on the sidewalk. We were just a few doors down from um, our first location and we were just chatting not really ready to go back yet and we looked to the side and it was our front windows here and we saw a big for rent sign so so the people that were here before they were a custom picture framing shop mm -hmm. they actually moved because they bought a building kind of on the other side of town and this place had only been available for like a, a couple days before mm -hmm. we saw it yeah. And they were here for 26 years, so I don't know that they knew to expect to be moving out. They had been here for such a long time. Yeah, and, and one of the reasons this space could have still been available, even though it was only a few days, um, it, it needed a ton of work. Yeah. Because they were here for so long. They were here for so yeah. long. It was outdated. There, there were drop ceilings mm -hmm. that needed to be dealt with. The floors, they were old carpet squares. Really old carpet really squares. Really old carpet squares. A lot of holes in the in mm -hmm. the carpet. Where we're sitting right here had just this big chunk of drywall. There, they had this back room that just a, it, a makeshift office. Yeah, makeshift office. Yeah. I don't think it went all the way to the ceiling. Mm -hmm. The walls were really patchy from like years and years and years worth of paint. And we did everything ourselves. Yeah. So in total, we spent about, was it 60 days? Is that what you came up with? I think. Uh, was it 56 days? 56 or just just about days. two months on renovations. Yeah. So do, do you want to go in and talk about some of our renovations? Yeah. <laughs> so when we first took the store, we decided that we weren't going to do anything to the ceiling. We weren't going to do anything to the floor. We were just going to paint the walls get it you know just pretty enough to be moved into and the first day we were here we decided we're ripping out the ceiling so well the reason why is we popped up a ceiling tile because it was kind of like crooked and it fell out and you could actually see in the ceiling that there were these really old like tin ceilings that were original mm -hmm. so and the the tin ceiling was from the 1930s and it was in really good condition just needed some some paint. There was a there was a big section in the middle of the store that was actually missing, and it was just kind of patched with these random pieces of drywall. I don't yeah. know who did that, but um, they just kind of patched the hole, and then they threw the uh, the drop ceiling mm -hmm. below it. So we had to kind of deal with all of that, and we ended up patching all of that. That that was one of the more difficult parts mm -hmm. because with the tall ceilings and um, not having like. Scaffolding. Uh, scaffolding or anything. Scaffolding, you know, trying to do all that ourselves. I'm 5'2", like I can't really help you up on a ladder carrying giant things of beadboard and 
yeah. Thank, thankfully, we did have some friends that were able to help out mm-hmm. uh, when we really needed it. So that that made things a lot easier. Yeah. The next project we decided to take on was um, the wood panels on the walls. So the walls were in pretty bad shape. We decided that the easiest thing for us to do would be to cover them with wood. And that also helped us for moving uh, photos and items around on the walls and not really being able to show those holes over and over again. The advantage to having the wood planking on the wall is that we could kind of hide screws anywhere we want in the seams where the uh, the boards meet and that kind of makes it easy to hang paintings and pictures all over the place. Mm-hmm. Without really being able to see the damage that we're causing to the wall like we could at our old store. So all of the wood planking on our walls is from the local hardware store. We actually bought out two of mm-hmm. the local chain stores of this wood paneling mm-hmm. and we ran out. So we were buying all of the white. Yeah, and but it was to save time so that we could open a little bit sooner. We wouldn't have to paint it. It's just easier to work with. And it's also easy to screw stuff into the wall too. Like yeah. You don't have to find a stud. If it's just something small, it's mm-hmm. easy to put a nail in. Yeah, actually the walls behind us, so to our left and straight behind us, were brown up until maybe a month or so ago. Mm-hmm. We had a couple days off and decided we were going to paint them white. But the only reason that they weren't white is because we could not pre-order online. It was going to take a couple months to get what we needed to finish the store. We didn't have the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I would say that the biggest and most intense part of our renovation was exposing the brick wall. Mm-hmm. So we knew that there was brick here. This is actually an exterior wall and our our store was an addition in the 30s. Mm-hmm. So before was Russell's Automotive. Russell's Automotive's exterior wall was only showing for less than 10 years before they did the expansion. So we ended up uncovering a giant original mural on the outside of their old wall. Super cool find. Mm-hmm. And we found it letter by letter. We found, yeah. we found a big letter A and I was like, oh my gosh, it says something on there, cat. <laughs> And we went like A we to U, like it. letter by letter by letter, <laughs> trying to figure out what it said. I was like, Australia, auto, it looked like it said automotive. Brad's. It looked like it said Brad's for, for like a minute. Oh, from the way Before that it was like R. pulled? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it yeah, was, was uh, so, super it was cool. It was so cool. So there's no brick in this whole area. And then we're doing brick down here to that pillar. And our front desk will be kind of where like that tarp is right now. And then all this will be like wood. But um, that, it was a lot of work and we, we had to have the plaster th- that we ripped off tested to make sure that there, there wasn't was asbestos because yeah. we didn't want to deal with that. That's a whole nother, uh, whole nother story. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we, we put up a ton of plastic sheeting to try to keep the dust down. We sprayed the, the wall while we worked at it and mm-hmm. we pretty much used um, a hammer drill with like a chisel bit and we were just kind of scraping yeah. that, that plaster off. Unfortunately, it wasn't on like a mesh so we couldn't no, get it started and pull, pull it. it. And this was in like October, November and we had to have all the air off. So it was freezing in here, especially yeah. without the drop ceiling, um, trying to come in here and mm-hmm. work. That was really, yeah. really hard. Yeah, because when we pulled out our drop ceiling, we, we pulled out the, the duct system because it was just that really flimsy, like fiberboard stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, we wanted to be able to put like that, indu- that good industrial uh, duct work up there. So once we finally had all of this plaster off the wall, uh, we, we filled like two, two trailer two dumpsters. Trailer dumpsters yeah. um, we were just shoveling it into bags and um, kind of bringing it out and mm-hmm. filling up that, uh, that dumpster. How many bags did we have of that? We bought a few packs of the contractor bags. And uh, so heavy. I would have filled like the, the bucket or something, but I wouldn't have been able couldn't to carry it. <laughs> no, we've got some stairs in the back that you have to kind of drag things yeah, up. Yeah, so we so. couldn't really dolly it, which no. is which made things a little difficult. Gosh, that was awful. Now, once all of the plaster was down and it was all out, mm-hmm. we had this big blank canvas. We could see the beautiful Russell's Automotive painting. We knew immediately we were going to keep it there. Oh, yeah. But our next obstacle was like cleaning all of the brick because we had to acid wash it. But you cannot acid wash on paint that's on a brick. It was taking the color right off the wall. So we had to scrub it by hand. We got like a like a 
it was like an industrial detergent. Mm -hmm. We had these big like uh, like scrub brushes, and we were just like scrubbing yeah, this we were wall, <laughs> praying that the color wouldn't come off with it either. And it's about would you say like twelve foot long and maybe twelve feet tall, just the the space that's showing. Um, oh yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, so yeah, about twelve by twelve that we were scrubbing by yeah. hand, and then the rest of it we could do the acid yeah, wash. definitely like over a hundred mm -hmm. square feet of just like painted space. Mm -hmm. So, and that's the majority of our brick is, is the, is the, the mural. Yeah. We had no idea it would be that big when yeah. we started there's uncovering it. Yeah. There's actually brick, um, behind us on these walls, but we decided to stop just so that we could open before black Friday last year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, the business next door, the restaurant next door to us, they have an exposed brick wall and that's kind of what prompted us to start ripping yeah. the plaster off here yeah, and see what was underneath. We didn't know that ours was different though because it's an exterior wall where theirs for the remodel, they were an interior brick wall. So theirs is like a beautiful kind of brighter color brick, which we were expecting. And we didn't even think about the fact that ours was an exterior wall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our I, our brick is, is, a, is a little bit different. It's a little bit more of a, like a pale, like, yeah, it's like a pale yellowy yeah. orange, and then you know we've got the mural portion, which is mostly black and yellow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So after um, after getting all that plaster off and getting the the brick scrubbed, we had to seal it. We sealed it like five, five. times. We could have gone another like five or six times sealing it, but mm -hmm. we just didn't have the time. Yeah, I forgot what we used. We used a heavy duty sealer, and um, it was like for outdoor brick, mm -hmm. but. Um, it was it was water based and we just kind of put it in these big spray bottles and we sprayed the whole wall like over and over and over mm -hmm. until it would stop soaking it up so i think we did a pretty good job and uh yeah. i mean there's a few little areas where we kind of damaged the brick with like a wire brush or the the chisel yeah, bit or, or but, the color got a little scrubbed off but for yeah. the most part it yeah. almost looks new a lot of people ask us if we're the ones that painted it on the wall and my response nine times out of ten is that we wouldn't have painted half a mural. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. And uh, when you look at the mural on our wall, actually, the letters kind of stop and then it goes from brick to like wood planking. And the reason being is the wall must have been opened at some point because it, it went from plaster to drywall and studs. They popped a double door yeah. through, through the wall during the expansion in the 30s. So there used to be um, doors connecting. And then actually back here by us, there was a window. So mm -hmm. there's another kind of spot. Yeah. Of drywall. We were, we would kind of knock on the uh, on the plaster and we mm -hmm. we'd hear where where there wasn't studs or where yeah. there was brick or or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then from there we did our flooring ourselves, which I do not recommend to anyone <laughs> ever. It was about five full days, just hands and knees. We weren't even gonna buy knee pads, but I was like, ah, we'll just get the cheapest four dollar ones. We were just we were bruised. How many square feet did we do? What is this? This is uh, just over 1,200 square feet. Or yeah. Yeah. Tw about 1240. 12, 1240. 12, 12, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, just over 1,200 square feet we had to do of the new wood flooring in the store. And it was just like the kind of like click together uh, like vinyl floor. They made it sound really easy online, but yeah. it was not. Our floors are really wavy too, so we were having a really hard time getting everything kind of lined up and staying flat. Well, let's talk about um, when we pulled up the uh, the carpet squares. There was actually like a, a hidden message on the the subfloor, which is kind of cool. It was a love note from the owners of the jewelry store that was here prior to the framing shop. So over 26 years ago, um, they were here for 17 years, and the owner wrote Rodney Hart Lisa. Um, using a big paint roller underneath our floorboards, which is still there today. Still there, mm -hmm. yeah. So if, if these floors ever go bad after their 30-year like <laughs> guarantee or whatever it is, you'll, someone will see it again. <laughs> so there was a ton of stuff that had to be done before we were able to get this space open for business, mm -hmm. and we wanted to make sure that we got all the essentials done, and we knew that we could kind of go back and, and do those little, like, side aesthetic projects um, mm -hmm. along the way or in the future. Plus they handmade this is Kat. Thanks guys for being here. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you for your support. Yeah. All right. Thank you. 
some of the work that we couldn't do ourselves that we had contracted was for our lighting and our heating and cooling. So because we ripped out our drop ceiling, we decided to put in track lighting through the whole store to help with kind of our dark spots. And then we had a really cool industrial spiral duct system put in through the store. Yeah, so besides the heating and the electrical, everything else we did ourselves. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's funny that the heating and cooling guys and the electric guys kind of all came on the same couple days mm-hmm. yeah. so our we were pretty much kicked out of our own store for a couple <laughs> days while they worked in that here was hard. Yeah. yeah things started to come together and uh after that we kind of just finished up the trim i mean we the did painting. The, the painting yeah, the door casings a little bit faster than everything else we mm-hmm. knew that we could kind of leave that stuff to the end because we could take shortcuts if we needed to to get open and it's stuff we could finish later but mm-hmm. we got it all done so. yeah mm-hmm yeah, and then uh, you did all the vinyl on the windows. So we used to do a lot of vinyl work for our company, and we decided to do some vinyl work on our front windows. We've actually done um, a lot of work for our friends who have small businesses for their front windows, which has been kind of fun. Um, we're doing one right now, actually, for mm-hmm. some of our friends. And I think that because we were doing it ourselves, and we had this giant logo. I found it really difficult in November <laughs> when it was like 20 degrees out trying to get this logo on our window in vinyl. It just was not sticking while no. we were having a really hard time with it, but we knew it needed to be up because we didn't have a proper sign yet. Similar to our previous location, we pretty much built all of the display pieces here, all of the mm-hmm. shelving. We did a lot of that like gas pipe and uh, construction lumber shelving. Our front counter. Front counter. Mm-hmm. Our big, uh, big, huge display tables in the middle of the store. Mm-hmm. They're all on wheels, actually, which which makes it really easy to, easy to, to move around. Yeah, move stuff around if we want to change up the store a little bit or if we're hosting a class, we just want to wheel them out of the way. Mm-hmm. I think we only have one table in the store that we didn't build and then the two old garden uh, racks behind us. Yes, which we That's painted, it. actually. Yeah. You found I these. I found them on Facebook Marketplace and for these, a steal. They're like yeah. a couple hundred pounds each. Yeah, and they're eight feet tall on wheels. And you so. were like, hey, I found these <laughs> these really cool like things. And, and I have like, a small car, so yeah. <laughs> and but he had to my, <laughs> my truck was, it was in the shop. Yeah, we had no way of picking it up. So we had our buddy come. Him and I went to go pick mm-hmm. these up. And they were too big for his truck. They had to stand straight <laughs> up. We strapped like the heck out of them it to make sure they were tight. Seeing them pull in. But yeah. uh, they were all rusty and green, which oh, is which is cool. Green. But they were cool. I knew I didn't want green, but mm-hmm. yeah, they were they so, were really fun. When we uh, we used a paint sprayer to do our ceilings, mm-hmm. and while we were doing the ceilings, we actually just wheeled those. Uh, right I call, out onto the I call them the squares. I call them the bird cages. Yeah. We moved them right out onto the carpet squares. Mm-hmm. We knew they were getting ripped up, and we just we just sprayed them white with the ceilings. Yeah. Yeah. Just leaving the windows distracting. I know it's it's funny <laughs> when people are watching us yeah. through the store windows. Just give it a second. You can get out of here. <laughs> get off my lawn. <laughs> After we found out that we'd be moving into our new location, the move was actually really easy. Um, We moved on Halloween last year, and it took... It was Halloween. Yeah, it took, I think, two days. Just two days of moving because we're only four doors down. So our old location is the second building over. Um, We Mm -hmm. wheeled a lot of stuff just down the street. We filled up the back of the truck a few times. We had some friends help out to move on over here. But that was, I think, the quickest part of the entire renovation was just getting our stuff in here yeah that actually Mm -hmm. went by pretty smooth i mean i was exhausted at the end of those days but (laughs) it went by pretty quick and i we i feel like we procrastinated moving all of that for a while it was it looked like a lot yeah i mean it was a lot of stuff but i think because we had help it wasn't yeah as bad as we had imagined no no and moving into the into the larger store Mm -hmm. it was funny coming in with all this product and i'm thinking wow we need to get more product. Oh, it felt, we felt <laughs> so empty. But in our old location, the whole point of moving was that we needed more space. Uh-huh. So to come here and nothing is full or complete felt really, really weird. Yeah. Yeah. We, we adjusted um, mm-hmm. pretty quickly. We, we, we were able to expand on some product categories that mm-hmm. we had before. Yeah. And really fill the store out and start yeah. started to look pretty nice pretty quickly. Yeah, and all the paintings that we had in our old location, I feel like were totally overlooked because they would be kind of tucked in a corner or the ceilings were really low, so mm. it didn't really highlight the, the painting or the print really well. So now with our new tall ceilings and natural light, 
I feel like artwork even does a lot better here. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Is there anything you miss about the old store? I I really miss being right below the arcade bar. That was a ton of fun. We could go yeah. up. You could set the high score on Galaga every night. <laughs> Yeah, like but um, <laughs> there was also a really, really awesome food truck that was up upstairs right mm-hmm. outside our front door. Yeah, so and if we ever needed to take a break, we could go play games, you know, yeah. grab a lemonade yeah. or something. And It was nice being in a really, like, fun environment. I think the people that were coming into the store had already most likely been in the arcade. So a lot of times it would be parents that were, you know, maybe their kids were upstairs, they were in a good mood. I think that the environment that we had before was really fun and I miss that. Yeah. Moving into this new store, it it's brought a lot of um, advantages mm-hmm. to our yeah. business. Number one being the natural light, but the mainly main yeah, the foot traffic yeah. though. Our foot traffic has at least tripled yeah at, at least. least tripled yeah. yeah if not quadrupled no and um... for sure our rent has gone up a lot <laughs> but it's yeah. but we're doing better business mm-hmm. being being here so yeah. it's i don't know it's like a give and take kind of thing so many people even though we were already in business for about half a year or so um once we moved here and we opened so many people were saying oh when did you open i've never seen yeah. you before <laughs> and i Every time. Uh-huh. Well, we've been open since the summer, uh-huh. and we were just down the street. Yep. And they're like, I never saw you. I know. So that's again, funny. going back to us talking about how we had six signs outside, I literally mean it. No one could find us. Yeah. Yeah. We did everything we could to market in the basement. Yeah. And we we were able to to get a steady customer base, and mm-hmm. we were able to draw people in, but it's it's not the same. It's not the same. So because we have a much larger location, we've been able to be a part of a lot of local events now. There's something called Ladies and Men's Night in December, and it's just before the holiday. It's meant to kind of bring the community out to participating stores, and you can basically get free booze, uh, deals in store, tons of stores will do giveaways. So we were able to have our space open just before Black Friday and the downtown um, events yeah. for Ladies and Men's Night, which was really imperative to our business. It's, well, those are the, the biggest shopping events in this this whole area all year, yeah. our Men's and Ladies Night. Yeah, and then there's also art walks. And so we'll be missing our first art walk for that should have been on May 1st. Oh, That's yeah. now been postponed. But we have the space now. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were also able mm-hmm. to compete in the uh, the holiday like window oh, challenge. I so wish we would so have won. We made a big window display. We painted my bike red. It and was so beautiful. We had like fluff and fake snow all along the bottom. We put Brad's bike pulling us a little sled, and on the sled was baskets full of gifts and presents. Mm-hmm. It was yeah, it was a ton of fun. Was it was it was our first like real window display in, oh, yeah. in, in our new store. I love that stuff. Or in any any store because we didn't have windows we didn't before. Have windows. No. <laughs> yeah, that was I fun though. That, yeah. yeah, we just wanted to put together a quick video going over our new location and all of the changes and renovations that went into making it our own. Thank you all so much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook at West Bay Handmade for more. And also keep an eye out for an upcoming video of a full store walkthrough.